Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we are continuing in the New Jerusalem Holy Bible, and we are in 1 Kings chapter 2. David's Testament, His Death. As David's life grew to a close, he laid his charge on his son Solomon. I am going the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man. Observe the injunctions of Yahweh your God, following his ways and keeping his laws, his commandments, his ordinances, and his decrees, as stands written in the law of Moses so that you may be successful in everything you do and undertake, and that Yahweh may fulfill the promise which he made me. If your sons are careful how they behave, and walk loyally before me with all their heart and soul, you will never want for a man on the throne of Israel. You know too what Joab, son of Zeruah, did to me, and what he did to the two commanders of the army of Israel, Abner, son of Ner, and Amasa, son of Jeth Jether, how he murdered them, shedding the blood of war in time of peace, and staining the belt round my waist, and the sandals on my feet with the blood of war. You will be wise not to let this gray hair go down to Sheol in peace. As regards to the son of Barzillia, of Gilead. Treat them with faithful love. Let them be among those who eat at your table, for they were kind to me when I was fleeing from your brother Absalom. You also have with you Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjamite from Bahira. He called down a terrible curse on me the day I left from Mahananim. But he called down to me at the Jordan and swore to him. But he came down to me at the Jordan and swore to him by Yahweh that I would not put him to death. But you, you must not let him go unpunished. You are a wise man and will know how to deal with him to bring his gray hair down to Sheol in blood. So David fell asleep with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. David was king of Israel for a period of 40 years. He reigned at Hebron for seven and in Jerusalem for 33 years. The death of Adonia. Solomon then sat on the throne of David and his sovereignty was secured, established, securely established. Adonia, son of Haggith, went to Bathsheba, mother of Solomon. Do you bring peace, she asked. He replied, yes, peace. Then he said, I have something to say to you. Say on, she replied. You know, you know, he said, that the kingdom should have come to me and that all Israel expected me to be king. But the crown eluded me and fell to my brother and since it came to him from Yahweh. Now I have one request to make you. Do not refuse me. Go on, she said. He went on. Please ask King Solomon, for he will not refuse you to give me a, a bishag of Baph, of, oh, excuse me, Shunem in marriage. Very well, Bathsheba replied. I shall speak to the king about you. So Bathsheba went to the king Solomon to speak to him about Adonia. The king got up to meet her and bowed before her. He then sat down on his throne. A seat was brought for the king's mother, and she sat down on his right. She said, I have one small request to make you. Do not refuse me. Mother, the king replied, make your request, for I shall not refuse you. Let Abishag of Sunim, she said, be given in marriage to your brother Adonia. King Solomon replied to his mother, 
And why do you request a bishak of Shunun for Adonia? You may as well you might as well request the kingdom for him, since he is my elder brother, and Abiathar the priest and Joab son of Zeruah are on his side. And King Solomon swore by Yahweh, May God bring unnameable ills on me, and worse ills too, he said, if Adonia does not pay for these words of his life, words of his life with his life. As Yahweh lives, who has set me securely on the throne of my father David, and who, as he promised, has given him a dynasty, Adonia shall be put to death this very day. And King Solomon commissioned Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, to strike him down, and that was how he died. The Fate of Abiathar and Joab As for Abiathar the priest, the king said to him, Go to Anathoth, to, the, to your estate. You deserve to die, but I am not going to put you to death now since you carried the ark of Yahweh in the presence of my father David and shared all my father's hardships. Solomon deprived Abiathar of the priesthood of Yahweh, thus fulfilling the prophecy which Yahweh had uttered against the house of Eli at Shiloh. When the news reached Joab, for Joab had lent his support to Adonia, though he had not supported Absalom, he fled to the tent of Yahweh and clung to the horns of the altar. King Solomon was told, Joab has fled to the tent of Yahweh. He is there beside the altar. On this day, Solomon sent word to Joab, What reason did you have for fleeing to the altar? Joab replied, I was afraid of you and fled to Yahweh. Solomon then sent Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, go, he said, and strike him down. Accordingly, Benaniah went to the tent of Yahweh. By order of the king, he said, come out. No, he said, I will die here. So Benaniah brought, him, brought word back to the king. This is what Joab said and, and the answer he gave me. Do as he says, the king replied, strike him down and bury him, and so rid me and my family today of the innocent blood which Joab has shed. Yahweh will bring his blood down on his own head, because he struck down two more upright and better men than he, and without my father David's knowledge, put to the sword Abner, son of, of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa, son of Jether, commander of the army of, of Judah. May their blood come down on the head of Joab and his descendants forever. But may David, his descendants, his dynasty, his throne, have peace forever from Yahweh. Whereupon Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, went out, struck Joab down, and put him to death. He was buried at his home in the desert. In his place, as head of the army, the king appointed Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and in place of Abiathar, the priest Zadok. The Disobedience and Death of Shimei The king had Shimei summoned to him. Build yourself a house in Jerusalem, he told him. You are to live there. Do not leave it to go anywhere at all. The day you go out and cross the ravine of the Kidron, be sure you will certainly die. Your blood will be on your own head. That is a fair demand, Shimmy said, replied to the king. Your servant will do as my lord the king orders. And for a long time Shimmy lived in Jerusalem. But when three years had gone by, it happened that two of Shimei's slaves ran away to Akish, son of Maacah, king of Gath. Shimei was told, 
Your slaves are in Gath. On this, Shimei got up and saddled his donkey and went to Akish at Gath to find his slaves. He went off and brought his slaves back from Gath. Solomon was informed that Shimei had left Jerusalem for Gath and come back again. The king had Shimei summoned to him. Did I not make you swear by Yahweh, he said, and did I not warn you? The day you leave to go anywhere at all, be sure you will certainly die. To which you replied, that is a fair demand. Why did you not keep the oath to Yahweh and the order which I imposed on you? The king then said to Shimei, you know well all the evil you did to my father David. Yahweh is about to bring your wickedness down on your own head. But may, king, but may King Solomon be blessed, and may the throne of David be kept secure before Yahweh forever. The king gave orders to Benaniah, a son of Jehoiada. Jeho 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 he went out and struck Shimei down, and that was how he died. And now the kingdom was securely in Solomon's hands. Section 2, Solomon in all his glory. Subsection A, Solomon the Sage. Introduction, Chapter 3. Solomon became the son-in-law of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He mar married Pharaoh's daughter and took her to the city of David until he could complete the building of his palace, the temple of Yahweh and the ramparts of Jerusalem. The people, however, were still sacrificing on the high places, because at that time a dwelling place for the name of Yahweh had not yet been built. Solomon loved Yahweh. He followed the precepts of his father David, except that he offered sacrifice and incense on the high places. Solomon's Dream at Gibeon The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, since that was the principal high place. Solomon presented a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, Yahweh appeared to Solomon in a dream during the night. God said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, You showed most faithful love to your servant David, my father, when he lived his life before you in faithfulness and uprightness and integrity of heart. You have continued this most faithful love to him by allowing a son of his to sit on his throne today. Now, Yahweh my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David my father. But I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership, and here is your servant, surrounded with the people whom you have chosen, a people so numerous that its number cannot be count counted are reckoned. So give your servant a heart to understand how to govern your people, how to discern between good and evil, for how could one other otherwise govern such a great people as yours? It pleased Yahweh that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you, since you have asked for this, God said, and not asked for a long life for yourself, or riches are the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd, as no one has had before, and no one will have after you. What you have not asked, I shall give you too, such riches and glory as no other king can match, and I shall give you a long life. If you follow my ways, keeping my laws and commandments, as your father David followed them. Then Solomon woke up. It had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. He presented burnt offerings and communion sacrifices and held a banquet for all those in his service. And we're going to read one more little section and that will take us to chapter 4. The Judgment of Solomon 
Later, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. If it please you, my lord, one of the women said, this woman and I live in the same house, and while she was in the house, I gave birth to a child. Now it happened on the third day after my delivery that this woman also gave birth to a child. We were alone together. There was no one else in the house with us, just the two of us in the house. Now one night this woman's son died. She overlaid him. And in the middle of the night she got up and took my son from beside me while your servant was asleep. She took him in her arms and put her own dead son in mine. When I got up to suckle my child, there he was, dead. But in the morning I looked at him carefully, and he was not, my, not the child I had born at all. Then the other woman spoke. That is not true. My son is the live one. Yours is the dead one. And the first retorted. That is not true. Your son is dead one, mine is the live one. And so they raggled before the king. This one says, the king observed, my son is the one who is alive, your son is dead. While the other says, that is not true. Your son is dead one, and mine is the live one. Bring me a sword, said the king, and a sword was brought into the king's presence. Cut the living child in two, the king said and give half to one and half to the other. At this, the woman, who was the mother of the living child, addressed the king, for she felt acutely for her son. I beg you, my lord, she said, let them give her the, ch the live child. On no account let them kill him. But the other said, he shall belong to neither of us. Cut him in half. Then the king gave his decision. Give the live child to the first woman, he said, and do not kill him. She is his mother. All Israel came to hear of the judgment which the king had pronounced and held the king in awe, recognizing that he possessed divine wisdom for dispensing judgment. And as always, I love you.